Hello and welcome friends, welcome to another episode where I review vintage fountain pen beauties. And boy oh boy, today I have for you a beautiful, beautiful celluloid fountain pen from um, the late 1960s and the beginning of the 1970s. And guys, if you watch closely my channel, you probably know that this fountain pen was uh, reviewed before. But what is the novelty this time? Well, in the other reviews, this famous, famous fountain pen, which, by the way, the name of the model I will review today is Centropen 10016, a beautiful, beautiful celluloid. But in the other episode, you probably recognize those two out there. So I have a barrel without a nib and without a cap, and I have another one without its original cap. But somehow I've managed to buy this one. Let me put those like this. I managed to buy this beauty, which by the way, has the same pattern with this one. It is very difficult to capture the pattern in the camera light. I will try to describe it as best as I can. So this, is, this isn't a simple celluloid. It is uh, quite an interesting, interesting um, deep pearl green uh, side of, of or mother of pearl. It uh, is simply glossy like a mirror. So it's a wonderful, wonderful pattern. But returning to uh, my find, well, I found a Centropen 1106 with a gold nib. So this is the main difference between those models. The same celluloid, but a 14 carat gold nib and a simple steel nib gold plated. Of course, both are original nibs, so they are not replacement nibs. So practically, guys, this beautiful, beautiful model was sold in two variants. And I think that this is the luxury variant and also a simple variant but with the same same beautiful beautiful celluloid the other barrel i have in my collection is a simple barrel but i hope you can see in this lighting so if this has a gray tone to it this uh, a green tone to it this has a gray tone to it so this is gray with mother of pearl uh, highlights quite a beautiful beautiful pen of course i don't have its original nib and you will see that this model has a nice nice like um, a converter like piston which was quite common back then this is the converter like piston it is stuck to the body so you can't remove it it was quite common back then on uh, eastern europe made fountain pens also on Russian made fountain pens. So it was quite popular in the blocks of communist countries back then. I've done this video guys to highlight the two variants of the same beautiful, beautiful model. And also I will do a comparison writing video between the simple steel gold plated nib and the other one which has the 14 karat gold nib it will be quite quite an interesting comparison i believe that both of the nibs are fine or extra fine we will see that in a minute so before i will do the actual review let me look at this variant and let me try to compare it with the other versions so like I told you, a stunning, beautiful, beautiful celluloid. What is interesting about this model of Centropen, not only it is a well-built fountain pen, but it is worth noting that no two pens are identical in their patterns, as uh, they were made from different casts of celluloid. 
and even if they were made from the same cast, the molding of the same cast has different shapes and patterns on different places, as, as you can see, in the same mold cast. So no two pens will be ever identical. They are quite stunning, guys. Probably the most interesting and glossy celluloid I have seen. Okay, guys, let me now try to compare the simple version with the other version. As you can see, they have uh, brass trims. I believe that on the luxury model they were gold plated and indeed you can see the gold plating here, the gold plating here. And when I unscrew the barrel, we see the identical, practically it is an identical grip section and the difference is in the nibs. So a 14 carat Ripet Czechoslovakia and a central pen 42 special nib. Judging by the way they end, I think they are both fine or extra fine. On the back we have a quite interesting ebonite feeder which does a great great job and they are quite well built they are highly ergonomic they have the perth and length and thickness and they have a, a good good grip and they feel quite quite nice in the hand guys so now I will leave the dimensions this time of the full fountain pen so including its um, cap I will leave its dimensions on the screen and after that I will do the writing sample with both of them so now I will uh, change the angle of the camera guys for you to see better the writing sample okay like this Okay, I will put this barrel right over here and um, I'm sorry guys, I've just run out of uh, space on my notepad so I will use uh, this old, old uh, quote when I, back when I did uh, videos with uh, special, special quotes for, from special uh, and famous persons. So I will uh, try to uh, restrict myself to this page and let me see for the for the ink well I think I will use a simple simple ink a blue ink from uh, Faber Castell let me show you so a simple simple ink from Faber Castell Koenigs Blau or Royal Blue Erasable Ink quite interesting made in Austria so this is the nib I will give uh, the um, ink I will give it a little shake I will put it right over here now I will open it whoa I'm I hate when this happens, so this gets stuck. Okay. Okay, guys. So, first of all, I will open this steel version of the Centro Pen 1110016. And it has this integrated piston like a converter ink converter so let me zoom a little bit out because i want to show you what i'm doing so i will i'm just rotating this piston and i hope oh maybe this is stuck i'm not so sure guys oh yes i think that this is stuck no problem we will just simply dip this pan dip it in ink this is a really, really problem when it happens 
um, I'm not so sure how to service it. So maybe sometimes I will get it to work. So let me take also a tissue. I think I have a tissue right over here. Okay. So I will remove the excess of the ink, but only from the grip section. Okay. Now I will put back this one and I will leave it for a moment right here. I hope it w won't um, lose its ink flow because it uh, it uh, has not a cap. It doesn't have a cap, okay? Uh, this, uh, I know it works because I've uh, cleaned it up before uh, this video. So, guys, you simply insert it like this. And you see the road is fully, so you operate it like this. Uh, there's still uh, some ink residues, but you turn this till you reach the end. And now when you retract it, it will pull up ink. And I hope it will show on the video. Let me try to, yes, you can see how it draws the ink and let me tell you it has a large large ink capacity so back then the communist country knew something look at this interesting reservoir the only problem is that by sticking it to the body if it has problems you can't remove it like a traditional ink converter so this is a bad bad thing but uh, some uh, eastern european producers adopted their production after the 1990s with the uh, popularity of the um, ink cartridges they adapted their models and they've made uh, this removable so you can use it with uh, ink converter or with an international size ink cartridge not in this case in the 1960s uh, the international ink converter while uh, ink cartridge was not yet invented so i believe aurora if you watch my channel aurora with the model auretta brought an interesting interesting ink cartridge but uh, the one that stood the test of time was the famous ink cartridge developed by Pelican for its model Pelicano, which was highly inspired by the Italians, but that is another story, guys. So, I'm ready for the writing sample. Okay. Now, I will show you if we can post the cap yes we can post it quite securely it looks wonderful but guys due to the fact that we don't have any protection here it will develop micro scratches so i recommend it to use it unkept okay i will uh, leave g this open just in case i need some dip for the, the other piece so uh let me see I will write first with the one with the steel nib. So this has the steel nib. Steel nib. This will be the first variant. So the steel nib. So I have a centro pen. Centro pen. 10016. It has the steel nib centro pen number 42. Okay. And this central pen, I believe it was made in the late 60s, so at the second half of the 1960s, between 1965 and, let's say, early 1970s. So this is the steel nib, guys. It uh, writes quite interesting. Let me put it right here. And now, let me show you how the gold nib writes. So number two, the gold nib the 14 karat gold nib also fitted on central pen 
10016. Okay, so this is 14 character Repet. Repet. Repet was a famous brand in the 1930s in the Bohemia region, so in Czechoslovakia. Yes. And 1965, 1970s. Well, I forgot to mention that this is made in Czechoslovakia. So, Che. Okay, quite interesting. The same, practically the same, the same uh, ink, but uh, look, maybe I need to dip this more in ink. Okay. Now let's test, guys, if the steel nib has some flex to it. I hope you can see. I will try to zoom even more. Let's focus on the, okay and i hope you can see so now yes and it has yes a little little flex now let me test how juicy the steel nib is it appears to be quite quite juicy as you can see and let's see if we have some line variance. So here, no pressure. And here, pressure. What can I say? Uh, no, no visible, visible line variance. I bet it does the signatures quite, quite nice. Yes, being a juicy nib. And reverse reverse writing amazing in reverse writing it scratches a little bit but it didn't lose the ink flow so i think okay for short sessions of writing so now let me see the gold nib so right above it the gold nib i will try to see if we have some line variance amazing I hope you can see guys, yes, we have a little flexibility, a little, little flex. Okay, let me see now how juicy the gold nib is. Whoa, you saw that. Now let me see the line variance. So here, no pressure and here, pressure. No line variance, no line variance, at least not a visible line variance. I think it's good for signatures. Yes, it is. And let me see reverse writing with the gold nib. Reverse writing. Well, let me tell you, it does a better job than uh, the steel nib. It d didn't scratch so good in reverse writing. Now, guys, for the last test, let me tell you about the fox, and I will try to write here. So, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. Well, quite nice. Now let me see the gold nib. So the same, the quick brown fox jumps over the lazy dog. So guys, those are the two nibs. I prefer the gold nib 
uh, but also the steel nib does a good good job what is your opinion guys what do you prefer uh, based on what you saw over here of course um, it uh, won't be a fair comparison because you have to hold it in your hand and you have to feel how each and every nib feels so of course some of you prefer a gold shiny nib but also sometimes a steel nib could be more smooth or more efficient than a gold nib it depends on the tuning and lots and lots of other factors guys so guys uh, this was my uh, review including with a writing sample of a truly amazing pen uh, extremely well built simply and stunning with this uh, celluloid material a beautiful and unique fountain pen it gives you a nice nice feel in the hand and it's certainly a true piece of the history of the communist made fountain pens in the eastern europe in the 1960s and in the 1970s so thank you for your time guys i want to wish you to have a wonderful day let me see have a nice day so have a nice day friends wherever you are this is the golden nib and this is the steel nib have a nice day here it appears to be a broader nib than the other nib uh, it's just the way you feel them in uh, your hand but truly amazing amazing nibs and stunning looking pieces of uh, fountain pens so guys thank you again for your time if you've enjoyed this review and you want to see more reviews and unboxings on my channel of new and vintage writing instruments please subscribe to my channel to support my activity i will see you again at the next episode till then bye bye and god bless